<laughs> this little animated intro I did has been seen over 11 million times here on YouTube now. Just so happens it makes a pretty cool t-shirt, which you can get right down here below in my new YouTube t-shirt shop or go to thinkerthunger.com. Check it out. And in today's video, normally I don't get into photographs because they can be edited, they can be altered a million times easier than video can. But this photo just keeps coming up. It's called the Alberta Bigfoot photo. And it's like one of these illusions, a mind trick, where some people swear they see a bear or a big dog and others swear they see some big giant furry thing lounging in a meadow. Now, my goal here isn't to prove that it's a Bigfoot, but I will prove that it's not a bear or dog or anything like that. Let's go check it out. <laughs> now, here's what I see. And this 3D model is a gorilla. It's not a Bigfoot, but it's a very natural primate pose. He could be, he could be having a snack there. He could be playing chess, uh, tending a young one, whatever. But we primates, we sit like that. We lounge like that. So that, that is very realistic, very believable pose for me. And it's obviously not a dog because dogs have that classic hind leg, dog leg, that, that bent dog shape. Now look at the dog leg compared to the red line. What's there? Not similar at all. It is not a dog leg shape. Okay, so now we're inside a 2D animation program and I've cut out an image of a bear here because it's facing the same general direction that this image on the left is, if you believe it's a bear. And I've also given this guy some bones so that we can bend it around some. And we'll just get that back leg back there a little. And this hump, this, this is the first problem. Here's what this bear would have to be doing. Some, something like that. that. That's not bending its back. That's pinching its back, you know, just above its tailbone. Bears have spines like ours with vertebrae, they bend gradually, incrementally out towards the center the most. They don't bend just above the tailbone like that. Uh, unless, of course, you think this is a bear with a birth defect. And now you're really grasping at straws. The second problem with the bear theory is look at a bear over here on the right. Look at its actual hind leg. You know, it's relatively small and shapeless. Compare that to this shape over here. I mean, we see massive amounts of muscle. We see a completely different shape. So for you to believe this is a bear, you have to believe two things. One, that it's a bear with a back deformity and that its lower leg is massively built up and muscular. So you're going to have to provide some photo or videos of that. Otherwise, your bear does not exist. And now I'm gonna drop this illustration of a human arm in here and I'll scale it down some and turn it a little bit, scale a little bit more. Look at that, perfect fit. And so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna up the ante, beef this muscle up a little or not a little a great deal to show us just what we're dealing with something about like that look at that that is a fit a perfect fit all those muscle groups lining up even if you think that's a man in a suit they did what an amazing job they did laying in all these muscles for that suit just to get one shot of it sitting out there with its back to us. Show me that suit. Prove that. And now watch. If I take this layer and I make an overlay of it, look how perfectly all of those muscle groups line up. Okay, so now, was this photograph digitally enhanced? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop this out here, and I'm going to just simply start 
pushing the levels here on the exposure. And, and something funny happens when, when you do that. It shifts the photograph and kind of reveals the dominant color. See that kind of purple hue that's, that's everywhere. Uh, maybe it was the, the color of the light at that moment, or maybe it's a characteristic of the camera, but that dominant color becomes kind of like a fingerprint for that photograph, a little telltale sign that they can't really be faked unless you purposely go in and change the color of it. And we'll try that again. Looking at these penguins, pushing the levels. We see all of that blue from the sky and the ocean was refracting that blue light everywhere. And the penguins fur was absorbing all that light. And so blue here was the dominant color, the fingerprint of that photo. And if we look at this, well, it's pretty easy to tell what the dominant color here is. It's green. And all of that green is just refracting and bouncing around everywhere, getting absorbed into that bear's fur. So if I stole objects from other photographs and, and put them here in this photograph, would they retain that original fingerprint, that original dominant color? And if I start pushing the levels, yes, they do. So the fact that we see one dominant color, th that purple consistent throughout this photograph of the Alberta Bigfoot tells me that nothing has been added here. Okay. Last thing I want to do quick little test. Just going to outline this. Okay. Now I'm going to flip that horizontally. See that flip horizontal, boom, there it goes. And now I'm going to just straighten that up just a bit there. Look at that perfect symmetry. Now you don't find symmetry like that in nature, just accidentally, generally, you know, looking at, looking at uh, a profile of some animal digging. I mean, if you do, I would think that would be pretty rare and I would like to see a photograph or video of that. You find symmetry like this, looking at say, the back of someone seeing their head and their shoulders. That's how symmetrical that is. And that's exactly what I see. And I see a massive back, massive thigh, shin, massive shoulder, triceps, and forearm. I don't know who or what this is, but again, it is not a bear, not a cow, not a dog. All right, guys, that is all I've got. Do you see in this image a bear that with a deformed back that could somehow peach it just above the hip bone? Or do you see something else? Um, and hey, if you guys like my videos and want me to keep making them, you can do one of three things. One, you can please turn off ad blocker when you're watching my videos so that I can get the pittance that I get from Google. But let me tell you, it helps. You know, I'm not a rich guy and two weeks to make one of those videos is a long time to donate. A second thing you can do is, is go to my t-shirt shop right down here below and buy a t-shirt. You know, it helps me a great deal. It affords me the time to get to do this and you get a t-shirt or a decal or whatever. And over 200 people have done that now. That's insane. Thank you guys so very much. I hope you enjoy the t-shirts immensely, immensely. And the third thing you can do is become a patron over at patreon.com. All I ask is $1 a month. Some people will, some, they'll pitch in a dollar a month for three months. That's great. I appreciate that so very much. Some people pitch in more. I don't ask them to do that. They're, they're just that generous. But I'll tell you what they're doing. They're helping make sure that I can afford the time to make these videos. You know, I am not a rich guy. All right, please weigh in. Please comment. Please keep the comments clean. We've got kids, families that watch these and read through the comments. And also please subscribe and hit the little bell button down there to get uh, notices. Please, subs uh, please like and please share my videos online. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.